old Marley was as dead as a doornail. This must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am going to relate. The register of his burial was signed by Scrooge, and Scrooge's name was good on the London Exchange for anything he chose to put his hand to. Ah, Mr. Scrooge. Your servant, sir. Are you off home to keep Christmas? I am not in the habit of keeping Christmas, sir. Then why are you leaving so early? Because, sir, Christmas is a habit of keeping men from doing business. Come, it's the nature of things that ants toil and grasshoppers sing and play, Mr. Scrooge. An ant is what it is and a grasshopper is what it is. And Christmas, sir, is a humbug. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scrooge, sir. Who are you? Samuel Wilkins, sir. Oh, yes. You owe me a little matter of 20-odd pounds, I believe. Well, if you want to pay it, come to my place of business. I don't conduct my affairs in the teeth of inclement weather. I, I can't pay you, sir. I'm not surprised. Not unless you give me more time. Did I ask you for more time to lend you the money? Oh, no, sir. Then why should you ask me for more time to pay it back? I can't take my wife to a debtor's prison. Then leave her behind. Why should she go to a debtor's prison anyway? She didn't borrow the 20 pounds, you did. Huh. What has your wife got to do with it? For that matter, what have I got to do with it? Good afternoon. But Mr. Scrooge, it's Christmas! Christmas has even less to do with it, my dear sir, than your wife has or I have. You'd still owe me 20 pounds if you're not in the position to repay if it was the middle of a heat wave in August bank holiday. Good afternoon. Be off with you. 